Hi, welcome back to You Don't Know Dak Wednesdays. And today I'm here with Melissa Murray Nanu, and she is here with the ECHO program. So I'm going to let her introduce herself a little bit. If you, I don't know if you want to say how long you've worked sure. here at DAC or. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, I actually teach the general ultrasound program. Sorry, general ultrasound. Sorry. Um, my colleague, Jamie Moreland, teaches ECHO, so they're both um, ultrasound modalities. Um, they're just two separate programs. Um, this is my second year teaching, and Mrs. Moreland has been here. This is her fifth year teaching. Um, so actually, the ECHO program is one of only three um, ECHO programs in the whole state of Illinois. Um, our general ultrasound program offers uh, abdomen and OB registries whenever you graduate and then there's a little bit of exposure to vascular too but vascular is actually another program in itself gotcha. okay awesome well we'll dig right into the questions so uh, is ultrasound just taking pictures of babies all day no it's not that's usually what you know people think um, but we general ultrasound we look at uh, things in the abdomen so we look at pancreas liver gallbladder common bile duct we look at thyroids uh, we look at you know guy parts female parts um, we look at superficial things so Really, we don't see, uh, there's more ultrasound that's happening with the bowel. We don't, we tend to not see uh, air-filled structures well. Um, so there's some limitations there, but then there's also vascular, like I said, which is a whole other program, and then there's looking at the heart also. Okay. How does ultrasound make an image? Uh, so what happens is we use our transducers here that have piezoelectric crystals in them, and the sound waves go into the body and they hit the tissue at different speeds and it bounces back at different speeds. And the brilliant people that designed these systems figured out how to assign the speed of each sound wave that comes back into the transducer and giving it a, a grayscale pixel. So we're seeing things in depth and at different levels of brightness. That's pretty awesome. That's it cool. Is, yeah. um, what is the average salary of a sonographer? Uh, well, in this area, you could expect to make around 60000 a year, uh, maybe a little less uh, starting out, and then as you get more experience, you can get some registries under your belt, and uh, you can get more, and then you can actually make even more if you wanted to take a lot of call. Um, so there's possibility some places people make up to 70000 75000 and then if you ever became a travel tech, those people actually can make up to 100000 a year, but you're, you know, you're traveling around the country um, in different places. Great. Awesome. Yeah. So for those students who are interested in applying for your program, what's the deadline? What's coming up for them? Uh, May 15th is our deadline. Um, and just to say to you with X-ray, X-ray has actually changed um, now. Their deadline is earlier, and they're going to be starting the students in the summer. So our program runs from August to August, both ECHO and ultrasound. General ultrasound runs August to August. But our deadline is May 15th. Um, that's for a first, kind of first wave, first picks. Um, and then if there's any openings that are still available in either of our programs, we do still take applications after. Um, it just, you don't get sometimes first dip by one to one. So. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else you would like to say about your program? Or? Um, I was going to say real quick about Mrs. Oh, Moreland's yeah, yes. about the ECHO program. So I'm just going to read these because she sent me in a couple of questions. Um, and this is actually true for both of our programs. Uh, what are desirable traits for a cardiac sonographer to be successful in the job? So you need to be flexible. Sonographers need to be able to adapt for changes in the imaging environment and patient ab ability. Our imaging situations range from hospital inpatients and outpatients, uh, imaging clinics, and even the operating room. You need to be enthusiastic. Sonographers have to be enthusiastic about embracing and incorporating the new technologies in the field. Learning definitely doesn't end at graduation. That's very true. Compassionate, we play an essential role in gathering the information for an accurate diagnosis. This typically occurs during a very stressful time for patients and we must provide comfort to them while staying focused on our task. And how does DAC program prepare students to enter the field of echocardiography? So our program is, like I said, it goes August to August. It's a 12-month program. It includes three months of didactic courses in cardiac anatomy and physiology, echocardiography procedures, sonographic physics, and EKG as well over 1,000 hours of clinical education performed in an affiliate hospital. The graduates of the program are qualified to sit for the credentialing exam given by the American Registry of Diagnostic Sonographers or the Cardiac Credentialing Agency. Radtech. Oh, oh, for Radtech? Yeah, so I know that we, um, they're extending their program, they're starting this summer, I they're believe? They're in the summer, yeah. Gotcha, so okay. the Radtech program starts in the summer now, and then they'll be graduating in May, so that makes the students a bit more competitive when they're going out into the field with other programs that are graduating, so they'll have um, opportunities for jobs um, that'll be kind of equivalent with what's going on in, in the uh, area. Awesome.
And our, oh, this is our new ultrasound system. Um, it's a Philips Epic. It's top of the line. We're really excited. We got a 3D40 transducer for OB, so we definitely need OB volunteers. Um, we take a volunteers that are at least 18, week, 18 weeks pregnant. Preferably, they've had their second trimester screening. That's what we like to see. So they've had their doctor already do an ultrasound on them. Um, but when, if you're between 28 and 32 weeks, then we can actually offer a 3D ultrasound now. So we're really excited about um, having this new system. It's literally top of the line. And Phillips even told us, the app specialist that came, she said she's never seen an ultrasound school have the top of the line system that they've always had lower level systems. So this is a dual platform. It'll go between both the general ultrasound program and the echo program. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much thank for you. being on Thanks today, and um, we will be back next week for you to know Deck Wednesday, so we'll see you then. Thanks, guys. Thank you.